In the first scene, we see a woman waking up and getting out of bed. She walks to her bathroom, where she reveals a cabinet behind her bathroom mirror. She takes a pill out and she swallows it, moments before she jumps in her car and drives away. While driving, she listens to a radio show. The air hostess is having a talk with the local authorities, and a man whom she presents as the chief of operations. She's asking him about the situation in the city. The chief says that the situation is bad for now and can be quite unpredictable, even risky and dangerous. The air hostess asks him if people are willing to return to the city, and the chief answers that the people would love to return to their homes, but they are afraid their homes are not safe anymore. The girl takes a tour over a glacier and the atmosphere is quite dark, which indicates that things are not probably going well. When she returns home, her father pays her a visit and they start talking. Her father asks her how she is feeling and if she has enough pills, which makes his daughter reply that she is fine. Her father argues that she could move to Reykjavik and they would be able to take proper care of her there, but Grima does not seem to like that idea. Her father adds that he is aware she is missing her sister, but her sister is not going to come back, which further pushes her to move to another city in order to let go of the past. Finally, Grima asks him if he is going to stay for a meal with her and her husband, but her father replies his heart would not allow him to stay. This place has been turned into a graveyard, and he does not like that. In the meantime, Dr. Derry is having a talk with his lab assistants. They inform him that the readings they are getting from the Katla volcano are a bit strange, and they can't make anything out of them. Derry calls his associates in the town of Vic and tells them he is going to join them because he needs to evaluate the situation with the volcano with his own eyes. As soon as they hang up, his associates start talking about the volcano. They comment that if it erupts, it is going to swallow the whole city, and they are going to be the first to die since they are staying so close to it. Just before starting to enjoy their meal, one of them notices something that looks like a female figure walking like a zombie, and he wonders if that is a human being. They mount their car and approach the figure, which in closer examination looks like a woman who has been burned or has been covered in cinder. They try to communicate with her and ask her if she is okay. The girl, clearly shocked, does not say anything in return. They take her in the car and drive away. Moments later, they have taken the girl inside the hut they live in. They try to extract some information from her, but the only thing the girl is able to mumble is asking where she is. In the meantime, Grima receives a phone call from the man she was listening to on the radio, Gisli. He tells her that he needs her to go and pick up a girl that was found, probably a tourist that got lost and suffered the consequences. When they drive the car together, Grima says that she met with her father earlier, and he didn't mention to have seen any tourists. This is quite strange, because if there were any tourists around, he would have noticed. Suddenly, Grima has to hit the brakes and stop the car, because the ground in front has been cracked. She and Gisli step out of the car, and Grima comments they have to be careful, because everything has started moving. Plus, they obviously need to take another route around the crack. Eventually, Grima and Gisli are able to meet the girl, who now remembers her name and is able to say that she is from Sweden. Grima asks her what she was doing near the volcano, but the girl can't remember. This leads Grima to her next question, asking if she was alone out there. The girl takes a couple of seconds, and she responds that she was near the volcano with Thor. Grima feels funny when she hears that name and asks her what Thor's last name is. The girl reveals that Thor is Grima's father. Things become even weirder when they transfer the girl to the nearest hospital, and she suddenly wants to get up while saying that she has to go to work. Grima asks her where she works and the girl, Gunhild, replies that she works in the hotel in Vic. Grima and Gisli get Thor and bring him to the hospital to take a look at the girl. As soon as she sees him, Gunhild recognizes him. Grima asks him if he gave Gunhild a tour around the volcano, but Thor runs away without saying anything. Grima follows after her father and asks him if he knows the girl, but Thor says no. Grima can't let him slip that easily, and she insists on asking him, remarking that Thor's face looked like he knew Gunhild. However, her father is not going to reveal anything new, and says he can't help them. Meanwhile, Gisli visits the local hotel in Vic and has a talk with its owner Miss Berggren, asking her if she has been hiding any guests recently. When Berggren listens to his story, she says that a girl from Sweden named Gunhild used to work in the hotel 20 years ago. Gisli takes her to the hospital, and it seems like Gunhild also recognizes Miss Berggren. She says that she should have called. Berggren asks her whom she should have called and Gunhild replies Miss Berggren's mother. Berggren tells Gisli that 20 years ago her mother used to run the hotel, and Gunhild used to work for her. Furthermore, she finds some pictures of Gunhild and informs Gisli that the girl looks exactly like the girl in the pictures. Gisli meets with Grima, and he calls the number which is supposed to belong to Gunhild. The boy picks up and Gisli asks who he is talking to, revealing that the boy is Gunhild's son. Gisli asks him if his mother is in Iceland right now, and the boy replies that his mother is just outside the house walking the dogs. 
Later that night, Thor hears a crow outside his house and walks out, noticing that a crow is standing right above a grave where he buried a dead crow in earlier that day. He digs the hole up and gets the crow out, and although it is still dead, it is identical to the crow standing outside the grave. Grima makes another attempt and she calls Bjorn again, Gunhild's son. She says that this might be a misunderstanding, but there is a woman named Gunhild in Vic, and she is in the hospital. Bjorn has a talk with her and he feels like he is talking to his mother, even though she is standing right behind him. When she speaks with Gunhild as well, she recognizes that she is listening to her own voice on the other end of the line. Furthermore, she is shocked when Gunhild from inside the hospital tells her that the only person she knows in Vic is someone named Thor. Something even stranger awaits for Grima when she returns home. She finds her long-lost sister Asa waiting for her, sitting on the floor and covered in cinder. The problem is, her sister has been considered dead since an incident that happened many years ago. She and a team rescued a group of tourists from a storm. Asa's snowmobile was defected and she fell in a crack. When Grima transfers her to the hospital, Gisli has a talk with her and asks her if she remembers anything. Asa says she doesn't remember anything other than she was with a team trying to save some tourists from the storm. The only thing she mentions is that someone gave her a vaccine, but she can't tell if that happened before Grima found her or once they brought her to the hospital. Thor comes to the hospital to see his daughter and can't help himself but hug her, which makes Asa remark that everyone is behaving a bit strangely here, ignoring the fact that she had been lost. Thor and Grima have a talk. Grima tries to rationalize what's happening by saying that maybe Asa was frozen in the ice, and that's how her body was preserved. Eventually, the ice melted away, and she was returned to them. However, Thor believes that theory is exaggerated because it would not really work and keep someone alive. The next morning in the hospital, the doctor checks up on Gunhild and tells her that everything seems to be alright. She probably has no memory due to the shock, but her memories are going to come back sooner or later. Finally, the doctor tells her that the baby she is carrying is fine as well, which catches Gunhild by surprise. She had no idea she was pregnant. Two new personalities arrive in Vic. The first one is none other than Dr. Derry, who starts working on cinder samples as soon as he arrives. The other one is Gunhild, from Sweden, who checks into Berggren's hotel. The next thing she wants to do is to visit the younger Gunhild in the hospital. She carries on with her intentions and meets younger Gunhild in the hospital, trying to measure her up by asking her various questions. Eventually, she asks younger Gunhild what her relationship with Thor is. Gunhild replies that she is carrying his child, which means that Thor had cheated on his wife in the past. Meanwhile, Asa takes a walk to the cemetery and she sees her own tombstone laying there. Soon, a crow lands on another tombstone near her and Asa kind of feels like she can connect with it. She extends her hand, and the crow flies onto it. Strange occurrences are not finished yet, as that same night, Derry is spending some time in the lab. He realizes somebody is running circles around him. He gets up and tries to find that person, or being, and ends up in his room in the lab, knowing that somebody is lying on his bed and under his sheets. He slowly uncovers that person and he is greeted by a boy who calls him father. Thing is, Derry's son died a long time ago. The next morning, Derry grabs some breakfast for his son and watches him as he eats all of it. Derry asks him when he last ate, and the boy replies it was yesterday. Derry asks what he ate yesterday, and the boy says he ate the same thing Derry ate, his mom's spaghetti. Mikhail has been listening to Eminem. In the police station, Gisli has a talk with his son Anar. Anar proclaims that this whole situation is pretty messed up, and they should communicate with Sweden's embassy to ask for young Gunhild's true identity. Kisley says they are not going to help them because they are too busy doing politics about the volcano's eruption. Inar asks Gisli if he thinks Asat was abducted and held by somebody. Gisli says that would be a valid suspicion if they were located in any other city. But in Vic such things don't happen. Back in Derry's room, he asks his son Mikhail various questions, such as what's his name or his mother's name, and Mikhail knows everything. Derry also asks him if he had any friends, and Mikhail replies he doesn't because the other kids think he is weird. Derry asks him if he had any pets, and if he loved them. Mikhail replies he had a parrot, and, even though he loved it, he cut his wings with a pair of scissors because he was experiencing a weird feeling. Derry has cleaned up his son and performs a physical examination on him, knowing that this can't be happening. However, his son seems to be healthy and well, even though he continues the crazy talk, and asks if Derry would send him to school if he had a broken leg. Derry tells him everyone should be going to school, including Mikhail, and the boy comes up with a new idea. He asks if he would need to go to school if everyone in school was dead. Derry takes his son to bed, and Mikhail asks him to read him something so he can sleep. So Derry grabs a report he has nearby his bed and reads it. 
Mikhail stops him and tells Derry that he loves him, which makes Derry quite uncomfortable. Derry carries his son outside his room in the main lab and locks him in a storage room while he sleeps outside. However, Mikhail looks around the room and finds an emergency landline phone, which he uses to call his mother. His mother is in shock when she hears his voice and Mikhail tells her that Derry has locked him in a room. After little Mikhail has called his mother Rachel, she tries to call Derry. However, she gets no reception, resulting in her recording an angry message towards him. Back in the lab, Mikhail is poking around and he finds a little knife. He uses this to cut a cable and cut the power off. One of Derry's assistants, Lay, joins him near the storage room. But Derry finds Mikhail first, hiding behind the door in the storage room. The next morning, Rachel has arrived in a town which is near Vic and the only thing left to do is to get somebody with a boat so she can cross the river. She calls Derry and tells him that a boy called her and addressed her as if she was his mother. Derry replies that the boy is not their son. Rachel insists and asks him who that boy is, but Derry has no idea, although he is quite sure that the boy is not their son. Finally, they agree to meet in Vic. Rachel asks him to bring the boy to the hotel, which Derry agrees to. Grima wakes up from a nightmare and her husband asks her if she is alright. Grima replies she is not alright and proclaims that she wants to take her sister back to the iceberg just in case she remembers anything. Grima's relationship with her husband Kyrton is becoming distant, and Asa notices that. Later, she catches up with Kyrton and asks him what's wrong with him. Her sister and Kyrton replies that Grima has many things going over her mind right now, and her husband is not a priority to her. He also complains that he always felt like his marriage with Grima was dependent on Asa. If she was fine, their marriage was fine as well. But if Asa had any kind of problems, then their marriage was in trouble. Enar picks Derry and Mikhail up in a jeep and gives them a ride to the hotel in Vic. While driving, he asks him various questions. He wonders what the boy is doing in such a dangerous place near the volcano. Eventually, Enar wonders how Derry decided to bring his son here. But Derry turns his head away, not caring to answer that question. When they arrive at the hotel, Mikhail runs into his mother's arms and tells her that he has missed her. Rachel takes him into her room and tells Mikhail that she and his father missed him very much. They thought that he was dead. Derry is watching them from the corner of the room, and he feels like something is not right in this situation. He makes his way to the bathroom, where he feels the need to vomit. Derry has a talk alone with his wife, and tells her he feels like he has been trapped in a nightmare. Rachel admits that this really does seem like they are living inside a dream. However, seeing her son again is filling the emptiness she had felt ever since he passed. Derry reminds her that they saw Mikhail's dead body right in front of their eyes when he died, and they saw that his skull was crushed on the road. Rachel tells him to stop and they reach a dead end, not knowing what to do, or how to behave, towards Mikhail. But Derry is not changing his mind, and says that this boy is not their son. Gisli and the doctor have a talk with young Gunhild, and ask her if she remembered anything new. But Gunhild replies negatively. The doctor tells her she is fine and she can leave the hospital if she has any place to go. Young Gunhild returns to the hotel and asks Bergren where Thor is staying, because she wants to visit him. Young Gunhild visits him and asks him how things with his daughter are, since she caught them having intercourse. What she doesn't realize is that old Gunhild is standing right behind her. Old Gunhild is mad at her and asks young Gunhild what she's talking about. But her younger version tells her it's none of her business. Old Gunhild runs outside and Thor runs after her, telling her to not leave like that. Old Gunhild asks Thor if he has talked to young Gunhild about their past. Thor replies that he has told her nothing, and he has no idea how she knows about these details. Grima drives her sister to the lab, because she has a hunch they might be able to find something there. While driving, Grima swallows one of her pills, and Asa asks her what these pills do. Grima replies that they supposedly help with her depression and anxiety, and Asa comments that their mother used to take the same pills, a fact that Grima was not aware of. Asa continues by saying that their mother's relationship with their father started breaking down when she started taking those pills, just like Grima's relationship with her husband is breaking down right now. Grima quickly changes the subject of discussion, and the two girls reach the lab. They take a look inside, and they find a piece of cloth under a piece of wood in the storage room. Asa says that they may be able to dig from the outside and reach for that piece of cloth, which they successfully do after a fair amount of digging. Asa crawls further inside the hole they dug, and she is terrified when she sees something she would never expect. She then crawls back out of the hole. Grima asks her what's down there, but Asa is breathless and unable to respond. This forces Grima to crawl down there and see for herself. Grima descends into the hole, and she discovers Asa's dead body. The next morning, Grima calls the police. Gisli comes along with some men to dig the body out, 
and carry it away. Gisli takes Grima and Asa in his car, because he wants to have a talk with them. He asks Grima why they went to that spot and dug, but Grima stays silent and doesn't say anything. Gisli drops Asa at Thor's place, and instructs her to warn him that a storm is coming, and that he has to be prepared. When Asa walks in his house, she sees her father kissing young Gunhild, just like it had happened when she was a little girl. Derry has a new talk with Rachel. He tells her that a dead body was found near the lab, and that can't be a coincidence after their dead son appeared out of nowhere. Rachel does not want to give up hope, and she insists that the boy is Mikhail. However, Derry remarks that their son should have been 12 years old if he was alive, and this boy that appeared has not aged, even though he is identical to their son. Rachel doesn't want to hear any of it, and walks away. But Derry knows better than to give in to his emotions. He calls Gisli, telling him that there is a boy in the hotel that nobody can recognize. Gisli and Enar arrive at the hotel shortly, and they are greeted by Derry. Enar asks why he didn't tell him about the boy when he brought them to the hotel. Derry replies that he simply didn't know what the procedure was. Rachel sees them through the window, and she rushes out with Mikhail, helping him escape and driving him away in a car. Gisli asks Derry if he wants him to call childcare, but Derry asks him for some more time and gets in another car in order to follow Rachel. Grima has a talk with Kyrton, and tells him that the body they dug up looks like her sister Asa. He wonders if there is any chance Asa is not who she says she is, or maybe she is pretending to be Asa. Kyrton tells her that she is worrying for nothing, like she has always done. When it comes to her sister, Grima tells him he can't understand how she is feeling. Grima tries to get some sleep, but Gisli calls her and tells her to go to the police station because he wants to get her statement. Grima drives to the police station and Gisli asks her why she dug under that cabin. Grima says she had a hunch at first, and when she went there she noticed some scratches on the glass, like someone was trying to get in. Plus, there was blood on the ground. Gisli asks her if she knew the body was there, and Grima repeats once more that she just had a hunch. Gisli hands her a picture of the dead body, and tells her that she resembles Asa. Since Asa is alive, Gisli asks her if they have any relatives that have been missing or if she knows anyone from the rescue team that resembles Asa. Grima replies negatively both times. Suddenly, an alarm sounds, coming from the lab. Gisli tells her it probably happened due to the strong wind, because there is nobody in the lab now. But Grima wants to go and check it out anyway. Meanwhile, the storm has become stronger outside. Derry can't keep looking for Rachel, which results in him returning to the hotel. Miss Bergren is right at the reception, and she tells him to stay away from that boy. Then, she starts telling him a rather unsettling story. In 1625, Catla erupted. The female farmer, who was pregnant, left her newborn baby to die, because she couldn't take care of it during that period. One year later when she returned to Vic, she found her newborn baby dead. And that repeated each year. Every single year, she would find a new baby dead. Until 13 years later, her kid showed up and it was 13 years old. The woman was obsessed with her lost child, and was happy to have it back, which made her take it in and take care of it. However, not a long time after that incident, her child murdered her in her sleep and then disappeared. Berggren's story proves to be relevant to Mikhail. In the next scene, we see him asking his mother's permission to get outside the car to take a piss, but Rachel tells him he can get out when the storm passes. However, Mikhail says that he is going to hurt anyone that will keep him contained. And Rachel asks if he wanted to hurt Derry when he locked him in the storage room. Rachel tells him to take a piss if he wants, and Mikhail steps out of the car. Rachel is now convinced that this boy is not her son, and she drives away, leaving him behind. Meanwhile, Grima goes to the lab and she finds a naked girl trying to find some food. When she approaches her, the girl says she needs to go home, and she introduces herself as Grima. In the meantime, Gisli returns to his own house. He finds his wife standing and cooking in the kitchen, which is very strange since his wife has been sick, and she can't stand. She even barely talks. Gisli asks the woman how she is fine, and the woman says she doesn't understand his question. Gisli rushes into the room his wife is supposed to be in, and she is right there, which means that his wife in the kitchen is nothing but a clone. His real wife is terrified, and the clone follows him and tells him that she has not uttered a single word since she came here. The clone makes a green smoothie for the real wife, but the latter knocks the smoothie out of her hands. The clone goes to the bathroom in order to clean her dress, and Gisli's real wife demands his notepad. She writes that the other woman is a devil, and he should kick her out. Meanwhile, Grima brings clone Grima into her house, and she cleans herself up in the bathtub. Grima tries to ask her some questions, but she doesn't get anything new. Rachel regrets leaving Mikhail behind. She turns the car around, but Mikhail has been found by a couple who is leaving the town of Vic. They call Derry to come and pick him up. Rachel meets with Derry and they get in a car together, 
while Mikhail tells the couple that he doesn't love his father. This is because he locked him in a storage room, and he almost died from the cold. Derry and Rachel reach the meeting point but the couple has left. Derry calls them and they tell him they left because the kid told them what he did to him. They are going to let the police decide what to do. When Mikhail hears that, he grabs his knife, while Derry warns the couple that Mikhail is dangerous. But they drive away anyway. In a series of events, Gisli drags his clone wife and locks her in the basement. She wants to go and see his son Enar, and that would complicate things. Meanwhile, Mikhail causes an accident, and the couple that was driving him to Reykjavik dies. Grima receives a phone call from Enar who tells her they have to cross the river because an accident happened. She writes a note for Kyrton before she leaves, where she explains that she had to go, and the woman he will see in the house is not her. Kyrton returns home and reads the note, but that will not prevent Grima's clone from falling into his arms as soon as she sees him. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.